we'll start the course with basic overview of SAP HANA and the need of it. If you are aware, then maybe you can skip this, but it will be short lecture. So you may actually watch it. Let's first understand what was the need of SAP HANA. Earlier system used to be like this, where we had the data on our disk, okay, stored. And whenever you, someone used to query or update the data, then the data will move from here to the memory, right? And to the user. So because of this, whenever there was more queries, then the IO bottleneck will happen. Input output bottleneck will happen because of the limited memory uh, available here and limited CPUs as well. So because of this system were slow and not performing as per the expectation of business. So what SAP thought is to bring SAP HANA. Now this was started as a database with option of multiple CPUs. We also had at memory level row and column storage. We had huge compression uh, inbuilt into the database and there was option of insert only deltas as well. So these were the few core functionality of SAP HANA, which made it very fast. Although we are still using disk, but it is only for logging or backup and rest of the data is available in memory. So what happens is the IO bottleneck, which used to happen earlier is no longer there. You can directly read the data from memory and use it because of that. And because of multiple CPUs, we can have a faster access to data to update it or to read it. So this was the basic idea of SAP HANA, which launched in 2010 and it is doing fantastically well now. And in this course, what we'll be doing is we'll be checking SAP HANA as a standalone database and we'll see all the options related to modeling, which are available in the SAP HANA system. Now this is the simplified version of the previous uh, slide. So here you can see earlier we had limited memory, we had desk and limited CPU as well. Now with time CPU has have become cheap and memory have become cheap as well. And with the new advancement of SAP HANA, uh, we can have huge memory and multiple CPUs, which is basically helping us to achieve phenomenal performance. And that's why SAP HANA is very important. It is core strategy of SAP, I would say now, because all the system of SAP will eventually have SAP HANA as a database and no other database will be supported going forward. Now there's one more aspect. So earlier, a lot of calculation used to happen at application level or front end and database was only used to get the data out or in. Now with SAP HANA, what has happened is database have become very powerful. Because of that, what SAP suggests is to move all the calculation from application to your database and let the database do all the hard work. An application layer shouldn't be doing all the calculation, only the database should be doing it because it is very powerful now. So this is very popular slide if you want to discuss SAP HANA because it gives a clear picture how we are making database do all the heavy stuff and keeping the application light. One more idea of SAP HANA was because database is so powerful and so fast, we don't need two databases, one for reporting that is uh, OLAP and one for transactions that is OLTP. This is not fully achieved yet, I would say, because we still have BW around and probably it will remain around for quite a bit time. But the idea is same that database is so powerful that on single database, you can do transaction as well as analysis. So this is the ideal state. But I would say SAP has not been able to achieve it totally, but probably they are moving in that direction. So this is the idea that you should have only one database rather than having a separate reporting database. You should have one database and where you do transaction as well as analysis. And SAP HANA also has multi-tenancy. What it means is you can have all the system related database in one tenant or one database part or one part of the database, but you can create multiple tenant databases and you can have separate application belonging to those tenant databases. Basically, these tenant databases are separated from each other and can be used in isolation. You will see we'll be using tenant databases going forward in the lectures and you will understand how it works. If for timing, if you don't understand, that's OK, because we will be going into practicals and we'll see system database as well as tenant database and we'll see how it works. So this was overview of uh, multi-tenancy. Now, although SAP HANA started as a database, now it is a full-fledged platform and uh, you can see there are a lot of options available. 
we can process or consume different type of datas you can see here there are a lot of options available and we can integrate with a lot of options as well. We can have different data quality or data visualization options or we can fetch the data from different databases. We can also have a unique front end where we can use Fury or other web servers which can be used as at application level. And obviously at database management level, which is the core strength of HANA, we have a columnar store, multi-core parallelization, we have compression, multi-tenancy, multi-tier storage, data modeling, a lot of options are available. Now SAP HANA is not just a database, it is a full-fledged platform where SAP is relying totally for their future. So this was a brief short SAP HANA overview, we'll go further in next section. Thank you.